Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into approximate integration and now look at example six, which goes over the Simpsons rule error. And this is the example we'll go over basically. How large should, uh, should we take n or the number of intervals to guarantee that the Simpsons rule approximation for this integral from one to two of one over x dx is accurate to within 0.00 zero one and now so this exact same example I did in my earlier video example two but for the trapezoidal and uh, midpoint rule so make sure to watch those because I'll bring that up in a bit so now to solve this what we're first going to do is uh, recall the error bound uh, formula which I proved in my almost two hour long video a few days ago so make sure to watch that if you can last that was uh, two hours but anyway so if we recall the error bound you have this error for the Simpsons rule the absolute value of it is less than or equal to k and b minus a five yeah, to power five and then you have 180 and four so make sure to watch that video and where k is k is going to be greater than or equal to the absolute value of the fourth derivative f of x like this for the for the domain x is less than or equal to b greater than or equal to a so now what we're going to do is well for the error what we're going to do is set up the formula for the error because again we're looking at to be accurate within this uh, number and again that just means make the error less than that so in our case we have a equals to one so we're doing the integral from one to two, and b is our right endpoint, and that is two. So now our function is f of x, this equals to one over x, which again, you could write this uh, simplified x to the power of negative one. So now the derivative, the first derivative, because we want to get to the fourth derivative to find a value for this k, which is the fourth derivative, the absolute value. So we got to find one or pick one, so let's just do the derivative. Derivative of the first derivative, put this negative one down, times by x, and take it two down. And this is just basic uh, basic power rule uh, differentiation. You can see the video link below for how to do the derivative of the power uh, functions like that. So and now the second derivative, the same thing, put this negative two down, that then we'll have a positive two times it by, and then you have, this is x, uh, negative three, we just take one off of the power. Now the third derivative, this equals two, put this negative down, we'll have negative six, negative three times two, and then x negative four. And so now when we take the fourth derivative, this is gonna be equal to, put this uh, negative four down, so negative four times negative six, that's positive 24, x to the negative five, which equals to 24 over x to the power of five. So now what we gotta do is find the values of that of uh, this fourth derivative. Let's go at x equals to one, the left endpoint. We get absolute value of four, fourth derivative of f of x is equal to 24 over, well, one to the five. And one of the five is just one. And this is equals to 24. So 24 absolute value is just 24. And now at x equals to two, this becomes, well, the fourth derivative of x uh, is gonna be equal to, we'll put this down, 24 divided by two to the five, and this two to five, you're dividing by a bigger number than one. We don't need to solve this, all we know is that this is less than 24 because you're 24 divided by two to the five, so it's gonna be whatever number that is. So it's less than 24. So what that means is, because we wanna find k, where k is greater than or equal to f of uh, 4x for, for the domain, x is less than two, or equal to two, greater than equal to one. So what this means is, what this means is that the smallest value of, yeah, smallest value of this fourth derivative that we can choose is this 24. 
because this, this is the largest one inside and then, then when you put in any other value all you're getting is dividing it by a bigger number so as you can see this is the lowest that you can pick so k has to be greater than or equal to 24 so we'll just uh, we'll choose 24 for our case just choose 24 it's the lowest one we can choose so we'll just choose 24 equals to k so yeah thus what we have is now what we have is the absolute value of the error is going to be less than or equal to 24 is our k value b minus a which is going to be 2 minus 1 to the power of 5 divided by 180 and then this is going to be our n to the power of 4. So that's what we want. And then this one, you can just simplify. This is just 24. This is 1 power of 5. So 180 and 4. So now what we want is this error to be within 0 0.0001. So we want absolute value of the error to be less than 0 0.0001. So what this means is, so we want this case. So we have to find n such that so such that we, the error fits this case so we'll have to have 0 0.0001 is greater than the error here so this is going to be 24 over 180 and 4 so we have to find the n that matches this basically so we're saying the error here this is greater than whatever this uh, maximum error we will be f able to get for the n value that we're going to solve for. So, yeah, so now if we rearrange this solving for uh, n, we'll have initially n to the 4 is greater than or equal to 24 over 180. Move this down, times it by 0 0.0001. Let's put this in brackets. So you could put this in a calculator, or for now, I'm just going to work this out by hand just for, for fun, because math can be fun sometimes. So divide this out by uh, 2, so then we'll have 12 over 90. So all we did was take out a 2 out of both of these, so they cancel. And then 0 0.0001. Do this again. This is greater than. Uh, do this. Do, take a 3 out, so we'll have 4. And then 3 will be 30. Okay, and then one more time. I'll take a 2 out. This is two, I'm just trying to do this by hand, just to see how far I can go. And this is, just extend this out, 15.0001, make this a better line. And then last time, this is gonna be one over 7.5, um, yeah, 7.5. Then 0.0001. And now this one, when you multiply this out, this is pretty much saying you're going to move this decimal place to the left. Uh, you can do it one, two, three, four times. So this is one, two, three, four. So what we'll have is a this uh, zero a decimal place like this. So we'll have three zeros. This equals two. And then uh, this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 75. And you can put this in a calculator and you'll see that that is that. So n is greater than or equal to square root this whole thing. This is to the power of 1 over 4. You can put a 4 here. This is a 4th root, 0, 75. This equals 2 roughly when you put in the calculator. Yeah, and here I've put it into the calculator, you can just put in the Google as own calculator. So 1 divided by 0 0.00075 to power of 1 over 4, or that's the fourth root. You get around 0.6, I mean 6.0427, etc. And also for completeness here, that, that equation I was doing, so, but I just flipped this around. So 180 divided by 24, 7.5, which is correct. And then 7.5 times 0 0.0001 is 3075. Just wanted to double check that. So this is roughly 6.4. So n needs to be greater than it. So n is greater than 6.04. But we also know for the Simpsons rule, n must be even.
must be even. So since it's even and the, the first number that's uh, greater than 6.04 that's even is eight. So n equals to eight. So we have to pick n is as eight uh, sub intervals for this accuracy to be within 0 0.0001 when using the Simpsons rule. And now some uh, some more words for thought. Compare this with example two, which in my earlier video where it was shown that to achieve this same accuracy using the trapezoidal rule, we needed n equals 41 intervals. And for the midpoint rule, we need n equals 29. Thus, what this means is we can achieve greater accuracy while using less intervals by using the Simpsons rule and the less intervals requires. Uh, required can greatly reduce the number of calculations and thus the computing power required when you especially when you deal with uh, computers and calculators etc and in fact many calculators and computer algebra systems have built-in algorithms that uh, compute you have a built-in algorithm that computes an approximation of a definite integral so whenever you're trying to solve an integral in your calculator etc they're using approximate methods some of these machines use Simpson's rule and others even use more sophisticated techniques such as a to topic called adaptive numerical integration. And this basically means it, it checks each function so that if the function fluctuates more on a certain part of the interval than it does elsewhere, then that part gets divided into more subintervals, whereas more flat or uh, pretty much basic curves, those use less intervals. And this strategy also reduces the number of calculations required to achieve a prescribed accuracy. So when you deal with really advanced mathematics or engineering or whatnot, so then this becomes more and more uh, important, especially when you're yet yeah, doing advanced topics like fluid dynamics or even yeah, basically mod modeling airplanes, etc. You want to get the lowest amount of calculations at a high accuracy, and and you're going to need to know all this. Kind of stuff. So this is this is quite important for application purposes and other stuff like that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this uh, pretty useful example on the Simpsons rule error bound. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned and like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.